there's you know certain things that we can see or we can perceive about ourselves and uh, other things that might be in the subconscious which we need to then pay more attention or be more intentional to recognize and to um, sit with um, and that is the part that really takes work and so in the book it talks a lot about how to turn inward which you spoke about as well looking at ourselves so turning inward and recognizing what's going on and a lot of the habits that we've grown up with have been developed subconsciously and haphazardly really because we sort of just go through the motions, I think, as we're growing. And a lot of the times our parents don't have this awareness. Well, my generation didn't didn't have this awareness to even ask themselves to pay attention to every habit that they um, engage in and to ask themselves, is this part of who I want to be? And so you spoke about how, you know, we go from habit, we're doing these things every single day. Uh, one example can be, you know, When you wake up, what's the first thing that you do in the morning? Well, it might be that you brush your teeth. It might be that you're preparing coffee. It might be that you exercise, whatever it might be. But a lot of the times, because we've been doing things for so long, we don't even recognize the steps that we're taking. It just happens, right? It's become our habit. We fall into it and then we roll to the next thing and the next thing. And so it's a subconscious type of living. And so the book talks a lot about paying attention and understanding the different uh, waves of the mind, understanding the different spheres of the mind and recognizing their relationship to each other and recognizing how neurons are created because of the links that we have with certain habits. And I found it really interesting because, you know, we we often get stuck, right? We, we get stuck in life. We get stuck in our careers maybe, or you might have like a midlife crisis point where you recognize that where you are is not where you want it to be. And what we don't see is that the habits and the things that we're doing every single day, the choices we're making, the votes we're casting towards all the things from what you're buying to what you're engaging in to what, how you're spending your time, propel us into the present that we find ourselves in. They're the reasons that we're where we are, right? And so if we're having a midlife crisis and saying that we don't really want to be where we are or perhaps we're not really liking the person we become, then we need to have a dialogue with ourselves and ask about what has allowed me to come to this place. And when that dialogue happens, uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of intentionality to sit with yourself and it's extremely uncomfortable because for the first time you're paying attention to you. And that's a process by which, you know, you can engage in um, different modes of of achieving this, but it's really about being still, being quiet and really hearing what it is that your self is responding to certain questions that you might ask. And so those questions then bring clarity and you can recognize, okay, well, I'm this person, or I'm that, that thing. And then as we go about our daily life, one of the aspects that I've found really challenging is that to be intentional while I'm doing the thing, that's a real challenge because, you know, you find yourself in the thing and it's sort of automatic and you can pay attention for like one second, five minutes, but then you sort of lose that, you know, attention span. Um, And in this day and age, our attention span has been shortened extremely. But when I'm paying attention, I can recognize, oh, I really don't like that thing about me or I don't like how I responded to that thing or there's you know and you what I found in my my own seeking is that there are patterns and I can see now as I've been paying more attention I can see how the patterns have evolved and so for example on Saturday I was going to an event uh, a sip and paint event and you know I have been planning this for months I thought it was going to be a great um little exercise or like a little thing that I could just do like a social event and it would be so much fun and I would walk away with this incredible painting Um, but what ended up happening is that one I was late to the class and the class was starting at one and you know I for whatever reason there was a bunch of events that happened prior and that led me to be late and I was like how did this happen because I planned this I knew where I was going you know then the rain hit then the traffic was horrible like all these things in the way that really made me and my state of being a lot more elevated I was in an elevated state of being that really didn't want to be in a paint session right now you know (laughs) Like I get there, I got there 20 minutes late and I'm just not in the mood to be painting. And so um, 
what happened was that I um, sat down and I thought, okay, just chill, try and try and do the best thing you can with this painting. And then I find that the teacher, because it was a large crowd, she didn't have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. And so there wasn't that attention of detail that she could offer me to, to teach me the techniques and to have this incredible painting. And so I'm walking away with this painting that I'm not very happy with. I've scrubbed it out so many times and I'm like, oh, now I'm blaming myself because I'm not in um, a good state of mind and I didn't get the result that I expected to have this nice painting and just feel really good about myself. And so I took that experience and I've really been thinking about it and just pondering on what allowed me to feel and respond that way? Now, in the past, it would have been a lot worse. And so I was grateful initially that I didn't react so extreme. I wasn't super uh, depressed about it. I wasn't, um, you know, festering over it over the whole weekend. It wasn't something that was like, oh, you're terrible and, you know, self-blaming. But it sort of just stuck with me to ask what aspect of my behavior of my or my intention was lacking where I couldn't show up fully accepting of the situation and going along with it. Because when I initially walked in, I had this like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry for this and it hasn't even started and I really don't want to be in this place, but okay, I'll just push through and it's going to be okay. And I was swift enough to get over it, but I still didn't like myself for having had that kind of feeling and that putting that kind of face on because people can see your facial expression and they can also read your body language, right? And so when you're not in a good mood, you don't want to be somewhere, people recognize that there's an aura that you send, there's a sensation that you send in the room. And so, you know, people will will feel that out. And so I didn't like that. And it, it caused me to reflect and say, okay, how do I prepare for next time? What is it that I need to tune into within myself that can shift that a little bit where I can be fully present and I can be fully engaging and fully myself the way that I want to be um and and no matter what happens right I'm going to find myself in terrible situations over and over again throughout my life because I don't control external events I don't control the weather I don't control other people's perception of me I don't control other people's ideals and so things are going to pop up right throughout my life and be against what I think or what I might consider good bad whatever and so one of the things that the book talks about is that it makes reference to looking or identifying. So first looking at someone maybe that you might admire or someone that you look up to or identifying set, set characteristics or an ideal of the self that you want to be and then focusing yourself on that. And so for me, like John Maxwell comes to mind. I, I love his teachings. I love his um, personality. I love the way that he delivers lectures and that he delivers materials. And so I often think back on him and I sort of reflect on his character and I think if I could just pick out certain characteristics of his and work on, you know, allowing those to be, I suppose you would absorb that kind of character or focus on that character in your meditative practice and, and really hone in on what that character looks like in, in any situation. And then perhaps that will help me to shift my perspective and to shift the way that I show up. And so... I think it's a constant back and forth of there are signs and symptoms you spoke about earlier that show us, you know, who we are. They tell us a story in terms of our behavior, right? We're looking at our behavior and going, okay, I did that. Why did I do that? So asking questions is really important. And then as the feedback comes, we need to be engaging and intentional to say, is that how I want to show up in the world? And if it isn't, then what am I going to do about it? Will I sit with myself and ask questions to identify where that's coming from, why that's showing up. And then, you know, sit with myself in peace and quiet to find out how I can shift this. Because I think it's really important that, you know, and all the greats say this, that your future doesn't just happen. Nothing great happens haphazardly. There's, there's always a plan. Like we have a plan for everything. Like I have a plan for the day. I have a plan for my kids. I have a plan for um, how I'm going to get to work. Like we, there are plans. And most of the time we tend to plan the very unimportant little things, but we're not planning the big things like our life. We're not planning where we want to end up. We're not planning what the year will end up like. We're not planning towards our future or desired um, retirement or desired job or desired state of being instead of living and so I think 
it's really helped me to, and, and this is a struggle for me even now, like I really struggle with this to slow down and to be like, where am I at? Why are these things happening? Why am I at this point? And even with this interview, I'm like, okay, what can I do? How can I prepare? So I'm asking everyone, you know, give me a template. What do you think I should prepare? And it's like, I just keep having this sensation that I just need to sit back and just be with myself because I've done enough learning and and growing and expanding and stretching that I think with this interview, it will carry me through uh, because I've always been a person who does above and beyond what is required. And so if you're that person, I suppose uh, the good news is that sometimes you need to just step back and not do so much, but just be present with what's happening right here, right now.